What did Mike Lee do that has conservatives all riled up and calling him a closet liberal? Today on the Tree of Liberty Society program. Welcome back to the Tree of Liberty Society. This is the place you go to for all things liberty, finding out what the founding fathers knew, what they read, what they understood, and what they acted on, as well as the threats to liberty and what you can do about it. So on today's show, we're going to be talking about Mike Lee. Mike Lee is seen because on all kinds of uh, cable news shows and books that he's written, um, he's got uh, voting records and different conservative indexes saying that he is one of the most conservative senators in the country. But is that really the case? Do his actions match his fruit? I mean, match matches words, right? Because we're, we're told to judge on fruit, not words. What has everybody all riled up? Why is everybody so mad about Mike Lee right now and calling him a closet liberal? So just the other day on his... Um, Twitter account for his Senate, not, not his personal one, but his Senate Twitter account, he said, I will be voting for Spencer Cox in the general election. Primary elections are where Republicans vigorously debate policy differences. The primary is over. We cannot risk Utah turning into California. We must defeat the Democrats by uniting behind our fellow Republicans. I, pr I promise I'm not part of some grand conspiracy theory. So now, why would that get conservative, grassroots conservatives, all riled up? Well, if you're not from the state of Utah, you need to understand who Spencer Cox is. Because if you understand who Spencer Cox is, you understand why conservatives, real conservatives, would be so upset about this statement from Mike Lee, acting as if all Republicans are the same. Acting as if any Republican, the most liberal Republican, would be better than a Democrat, as if there would be any difference between Republicans and Democrats, especially at that level, trying to promote the idea that there is a difference. You need to understand who Spencer Cox is, and then we can look at, is what's, what Mike Lee doing right now? Is this kind of out of the, the normal, or has he always been a liberal? Okay, stay tuned with us. Let's go look at Mike Lee's record. And what he said, and what he's done over the years. So even Time Magazine has talked about Spencer Cox being a woke governor. So, you know, woke governor. One of the first things that, you, that uh, he did as a, as a woke governor, well, is to sign on to this document called the Utah Compact on Racial Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Hey, this is base, This is DEI on steroids. This is a document by the Salt Lake Chamber of Commerce that Spencer Cox signed on to. And if you read Invasion Volume 1 and 2, you'll understand how the Chambers of Commerce are not these big supporters of businesses and helping to reduce government regulations, that they're actually um, on the, the line of the World Economic Forum. These these chambers of commerce, their agenda is to actually implement globalism. So we look at this document right here, and it says, we view racism as more than just an individual character flaw. It is a system of ideas, beliefs, practices, structures, and policies that give some people greater opportunity to be fully human and live a happier and healthier life than others. Unraveling centuries of internalized and systemic racism requires bold anti-racist actions and policies right now. Not racist is not enough. Okay, it's not enough not to be not racist, but putting in the work to be anti-racist. There's no neutrality in this, according to these complete dictators. She says, learning to uplift non-white voices even those you may disagree, who may disagree with you is important for white people seeking to be anti-racist. Okay, so you, not only do you not, of course, you shouldn't hurt people, of course, but not only do you have to uh, give people positions not based on their qualifications, but based on their race, you have to put forth opinions. You have to put forth ideas 
that you don't agree with, that you might find morally reprehensible simply because someone of a different race said them. Otherwise, it's not enough. You're still on the same par as somebody that is hurting other people, destroying other people's private property. Anti-racism is not just you're against racism. It means that you are tearing down those that are seen by the Marxist left as being superior and, and having an advantage, tearing them down, and then lifting up, putting above uh, anybody that's seen as, you know, marginalized, whether it's their color, whether it's their gender, whether it's their gender identity, you know, whether it's uh, somebody that's a sodomite supremacist, that's what's most important. You lift them up. Your identity, identity politics, is what's most important, not your, not your character, not your expertise, your ability to get the job done. No, none of those things are of any value. You throw that out the window and you say, is this person X, Y, Z? Is there, is it going to judge them by their, the, the color of their skin? And you're going to prop them up no matter if their qualifications are there or not. In addition to that, um, Spencer Cox also goes into the gender identity movement where, um, really being a groomer of children in this uh, online conversation with high school or uh, middle school students, he identifies himself by his gender. And uh, my preferred pronouns are he, him, and his. Uh, so, so thank you for sharing yours with me. Not only does he groom children in that way, but he's also a major groomer. The, the legislature, to be able to CYA, passed bills, uh, passed a legislation to actually ban men from competing in girls' sports in the state of Utah. Seems common sense. Crazy, I know. But what did Governor Caillou do? He vetoed the bill. He said, you know what? Women aren't worth protecting. We're going to ensure that men compete with girls in sports in Utah. This is who Mike Lee is telling everybody to vote for. Um, he brings the United Nations into Utah. He wears masks all by himself. He uh, is, is pushing. We can see that in this interview he did on KSL, uh, actually saying, getting back into this uh, diversity and you know, equity and inclusion nonsense, that uh, because Utah is so racist, we need to be reverse racist because that's what anti-racism is. It means be racist against white people, especially white men. And we see here, he's actually very much in favor of that. The Utah Jazz is excluding white children from consideration for their scholarship program. Do you think this is racist? And what will you do to prevent the Utah Jazz from acting in this racist manner? Well, I, I don't think it's racist. In fact, I, I think it's in response to, unfortunately, some very difficult and, and racist injustices that have happened in our community for a long time. Guys, all by himself, not even the KSL propagandist is wearing a mask. And they've got a cameraman. they got other people in the room. But Spencer Cox, in his own home, is putting on his leather mask. You know, it's just maybe he forgot to take it off uh, from some activities that he was engaged in before the interview. I don't know. Anyway, so this is what the, the governor of Utah is all about. And then Spence, and then Mike Lee is coming out there and saying, we got to vote for him? Because if we don't vote for this guy that is New World Order, World Economic Forum, you know, a, a, a reverse racist, a sodomite supremacist, if we don't vote for him, we're going to get California politics in Utah? How is Spencer Cox not already bringing California politics to Utah. There is literally no difference between Mike uh, Spencer Cox and any Democrat that might get elected for uh, for governor of Utah. And so Mike Lee doing that, this is a part of a long train of actions that are against what he claims to be. So in Invasion Volume One and Two, I, I cover uh, in in part. Um, Mike Lee's history, because it's vital that we understand who the enemies of freedom are, especially not just the open ones like the World Economic Forum, just totally open about it, but the most dangerous people are the wolves in sheep's clothing, those that are pretending to be one thing, 
constitutional conservatives while their actions are actually building the new world order. So, and then to be able to help people understand what's in the book Invasion, especially volume two on this one, um, I did a presentation that covered some of those points. I want to show you a clip from that showing Mike Lee's history. Let's watch the clip. So Mike Lee's history goes back to his even graduating from law school in 1997. In 1997, he became immediately out of law school, the clerk, a clerk in the U.S. District Court. In the following year, went straight to the Supreme Court. 2005, served as legal counsel for Governor John Huntsman, who is on Jeffrey Epstein's flight log list, or Little Black Book, sorry. Uh, 2006, back, went back to the Supreme Court. 2007, represented Energy Solutions. And then 2010, he was elected to the U.S. Senate. So in about 13 years' time, he graduates from uh, law school and goes straight to the United States Senate after serving in these powerful uh, positions that usually go to the well-connected and establishment. And then we have in the Salt Lake Tribune reporting in 2013 that uh, Senator Orrin Hatch and Mike Lee are throwing a fundraiser for Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell Wednesday evening at Salt Lake City's exclusive Alta Club. And again, if you're not aware of the Alta Club and why that's significant, they are the funnel through which the international conspiracy uh, issue, funnels its programs into the state of Utah level. It is where the Council on Foreign Relations meets on a monthly basis, etc. Uh, you can got other videos that we'll link to and articles that we'll link to in the description of this video. Uh, also, in-depth uh, information in the book, Invasion, Volumes 1 and 2. So, establishment working together, and Orrin Hatch, very much establishment, teamed up to, again, fundraise for another establishment Republican at the establishment organization here in Utah. So, and then in 2014, the Tribune reports, it's no surprise that Lee has trouble with Utah's Republican establishment and it's been long rumored he'll face an intra-party challenge when he seeks re-election. Now that the 2014 elections are over and the attention is shifting to 2016, Lee and his supporters are taking steps to build his campaign apparatus. So, Tribune is feeding into this um, line that, oh man, Mike Lee, he's really being opposed by the establishment and they don't like him and they're going to have an inter-party battle to try and get rid of him before the primary. In 2015, Mike has very good intention, and I say that because I worked with Mike. Huntsman told Lewis, that's John Huntsman Jr., a conservative commentator in the Washington, D.C. area. In fact, I don't know too many people in the legislative branch who are as brilliant as Mike Lee, his understanding of the Constitution, his ability to legislate. So this guy, this guy that's promoting destroying the Constitution, he, he John Huntsman, he was, uh, he's a member of the CFR, uh, attended Bill, Bilderbergers, um, he uh, was in fa he's in favor of cap and trade uh, supported Obamacare just go down the list of all of the elite globalist things and he's endorsing Mike Lee and Mike Lee has endorsed John Huntsman uh, for different things that he's run for and uh, so you have the establishment where they were saying the establishment was against him the establishment is actually promoting him and pushing him and so he, uh, one of the things that he did was he filed to get signatures when SB 54 came out, this is for those of you not in Utah, this was the way to destroy the ability of the grassroots um, party members to be able to choose who was the most representative of conservative values and put it back into the hands of the establishment. And so by getting signatures, he was saying that he was pretending, well, he was giving legitimacy to getting rid of the local caucus, getting rid of the local voice of the grassroots of the Republican Party. And uh, this thing called Count My Vote, which of course the establishment always does, is the Orwellian doublespeak, where they again, uh, they can put it into the primary, the general, this election of the masses, where they can push Democrats to register as Republicans, they can use their mass resources to outfund actual grassroots candidates. And so giving cre credibility to this, even though he had zero chance of losing at the convention, which would guarantee him a ticket, a place on the ballot, he still gave credibility 
to this process of getting rid of the grassroots of the party. And he had zero Republican opposition in the primary. And so there was no, this idea that the conspiracy, the establishment, the deep state, whatever, was trying to get rid of Mike Lee in the primary is just bunk. It was just an excuse to make it look like he had to do these things to make sure he made it on the primary ballot. And there was no opposition to him. So the conspiracy or the establishment, right? They're supposedly just all out to get Mike Lee. And uh, they're going to just put up the best, maybe Democrat candidate, right? Just, man, they're going to find some Democrat that just is unstoppable because the establishment hates Mike Lee so much, even though they didn't oppose him in the primaries in party. This is the best opponent the Democrats could come up with. This cross-dresser, Misty, Mr. Whatever it is, Snow, who is a bag boy, uh, clerk at uh, Harmon's Grocery Store. That's the best candidate that the establishment could put up against him. It was obviously a show, political theater to make people think that the establishment hated Mike Lee so that all of the grassroots people would get behind him. It's this whole Br'er Rabbit, don't throw me in the briar patch nonsense that people fall for because they don't understand the conspiracy. And so let's look at the record of Mike Lee. 2011, he sponsored a bill giving Obama unilateral power to create independence destroying trade deals. In 2011, he endorsed a bill giving Obama unilateral legislative authority. So just totally bypass the lead to Congress and can just do his line items and uh, in, in, in law to be able to just make law however he wants it to be. 2015, he co-sponsored a new graduated income tax based on the uh, Communist Manifesto. 2015, he teamed up with Obama again to extend all of the parts, the worst parts of the Patriot Act were about to expire, and Mike Lee teams up with Obama to sponsor in the Senate the USA Freedom Act, which was extending all of the expiring portions of the Patriot Act. 2015, he voted for the National Defense Authorization Act. 2016, he endorsed Count My Vote by going the signature path with zero chance of losing in convention. 2020, he votes for warrantless FISA taps. Mr. Constitution, you know, he supports the Constitution. So Mike Lee, from the very get-go, has been a part of the establishment, teaming up with Obama to destroy the Constitution, making sure that uh, government intrusion in our lives is expanding, making sure that socialism is growing in the federal government. And so this has been going on since early, early on in his career, and, con and continues on to this day where he is supporting a New World Order puppet for governor and saying that opposing him or voting for any other option besides him is bringing California politics. Completely disingenuous. It's gaslighting and it's a complete and utter lie. So I encourage you, please go to treeoflibertysociety.com or invasionbook.com and pick up your copy of Invasion Volume 2 today. So you can learn even more about Mike Lee and his long history of being pro New World Order and how any opposition to him by the establishment is a complete dog and pony show to try and trick conservatives into supporting him. So go check out Invasion Volume 2 at invasionbook.com. Also, make sure down in the comments, um, like to, you know, it, make sure you include any uh, insights that you might have that we might have missed. And any questions um, about Mike Lee's history, other examples that you'd like to you'd like to see, uh, but please share with us your comments, where you're watching from, um, in the comments below. So um, make sure that you like and subscribe, and you go to TreeOfLibertySociety.com, and you become a part of the solution. Share this, make it so that way all of the social media outlets out there have no choice but to stop shadow banning everything that we're doing because all of you are doing your part to make sure that this message is getting out. So I'm Ben McClintock from the Tree of Liberty Society. I'll see you next time.